Hi folks, something a bit different this week. Last week I was walking through Kmart and on impulse I bought a little $3 foam glider and here it is. My plan was to install the radio gear from an old TY8 Delta Wing that I had bought a while ago for $26. This radio gear was two channel, two motor differential throttle only, but it had worked quite well in a P38 foam plane that one of the indoor aviation members had given me. Let's see how this little mini project went. I had stripped out the plastic box holding the receiver to minimise weight and laid it out on the plane. I priced off the black canopy and discarded the two ball bearing weights. I hollowed out a space in the fuselage for a small 1S battery and the radio gear. I whipped up some leading edge motor mounts on the 3D printer and roughly fitted a pair of matched 8520 brush motors with red 65mm props and sellotape. I was ready to test it out at Waverley Indoor Aviation the next day. Hello. I had a problem. Man down. So when I go right, it does more right. When I go left, it does more left. Right, so it's doing the opposite. See? Which makes it challenging to fly. Yeah, it's going totally unstable. Yeah. Going out yeah. The first flights weren't very successful because I'd moved the motors from the configuration on the T white delta on the training edge to the leading edge, resulting in destabilization. After the coffee break and an injection of caffeine, I had an idea, and that was to swap the motors left for right and fly with the transmitter upside down, which would mean that I'd have to use the throttle in the opposite direction, but at least left and right would be correct. This flew a lot better, but not ideal with the transmitter upside down. I've sorted it. I've I, swapped I the, motor, well, I've swapped the motors over and, I'm oh, flying, swapped them over and I'm flying this upside down. So yeah, because of the Swap receiver? Because I've swapped left and right. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, what a difference having stabilisation makes. Not bad for three bucks, is it? This is an expensive yeah. hobby. The next test is will it play nice with the other planes in the air? <laughs> no planes in the air at the moment. That's it. I oh, yeah, managed to take off, but not a great landing. Next I created 3D printed motor mounts to slide onto the trailing edge to get around the stabilisation issue, which was actually not necessary. I also switched to the 55mm smaller props for less thrust. Flying weight came to 50 grams. It was a nice calm morning so I took it to the park to test it out. I think we've got a problem with CFG. Try that again with new CFG. Moving the motors to the trailing edge, it changed the CG quite considerably. Still needs a bit more weight in the front, I think. Right, I'll try that again. Oh, that's better. CG sorted, I then needed to fix directional problems. Okay, we're moving the motors out a bit to get more little control. Nice, it's slightly better. Okay, we'll climb a bit. Wow! Ride it. <laughs> Great little glide path. Okay, that's where the centre of gravity is. I then took it to Waverley Indoor Aviation. It flew okay, but I had to constantly switch between minimum throttle and the next notch up, so it was constantly descending and climbing. I then swapped the propellers around to give less thrust, but it was rather noisy. Ridiculous amount of noise for what it's doing. <laughs> It was nice and quiet last week with the big props. Oh, right. That fly beautiful, isn't it? It's a good flyer, way. yeah. Jeez, 
Yeah. You know something? Oh, stuck. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's um. Oh, the battery's getting flat. Oh, thank you for coming back. <laughs> I then decided to move the motors back to the leading edge. This would make it quieter and also make the CG easier to balance. I also spaced out the motors even more to give better directional control. And here it is, all ready to test again. I picked a nice calm morning to test it out in the park. OK, we're going to try the new configuration with the 250mAh battery first. There's our centre of gravity, it should be good. OK, left turns, good. Only on low rate at the moment. Seems nice and quiet. We're trying on the lowest top of sitting to see if it still flies. Try right turn now. Yeah, right turn's okay, that's good turning. Nice and quiet. Okay, we're gliding now. Check out that V right formation turn. above me. Right turn, oh, it seems to do that now. Okay. Now we'll try it with the smaller battery. And the CFG is a fraction back from what it was before. A few currents at the moment. Hey, we did a loop. <laughs> okay, bring it down now because we've got a lot of height. Still gliding. <laughs> Birds not impressed. Finally, I got to test it again at Mulla Mulla Mindoro Aviation. And here were all my planes stuffed into my travel box. Snap! Here's another Kmart glider. Andrew's one has got an extended wing, a tea towel, and three channels, including elevator. So you've got elevator as well? I have. For the first time. And a snazzy little tea towel. Right, I found that it flew best with the 250 mAh battery and the 65 mm red propellers. Blimey, this is getting busy. Peace at last. The 250mAh battery gave me about a 7 minute flight. Well, that was a fun little exercise, and I now have a very robust little glider that flies really well indoors, and even outside on a still day. It only cost $3 for the glider from Kmart, plus the radio gear from my TY8, which from memory only cost $24 anyway from AliExpress. I hope you enjoyed this little distraction, but I really need to get on with my other projects now including building a new plane for my 30mm EDF jets. This will replace my A10 Warthog. Also, the spring weather has been improving lately, so I've been doing a bit of outdoor flying. I've even been scouting out slope soaring sites down the peninsula, so I'll be posting some videos on that shortly. As usual, if you'd like to follow me on my projects, consider subscribing to Dave's Fun RC, and then I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.